Hello, good evening friends. Uh, today I wanted to speak uh, about cleansing of temple. This cleansing of temple is uh, recorded in all four Gospels. Matthew, you will find it in Matthew uh, chapter 21. In Mark, you will find in chapter 11. Luke, you will find in chapter 19. And John, you will find in chapter 2. And when I was reading uh, this uh, Jesus cleansing the temple, I noticed some of the things and uh, it took me on some research and some more study. And what I found, I'm trying to uh, bring it to you. So in Matthew, Mark and Luke, the cleansing of temple is listed towards the end of Jesus' ministry. Jesus' ministry was about three years and during the Passion Week or before he, when he was going, uh, he was crucified, before he crucified, the cleansing of temple happened that is listed in Matthew, Mark and Luke. But if you read the Gospel of John, you will find the cleansing of temple in the second chapter just after the miracle of turning water into wine in a, in a wedding at Cana, uh, this, uh, play, uh, the cleansing happened. So in Gospel of John, the cleansing of temple happened at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Matthew and Mark and Luke records the cleansing of temple towards the end of ministry of Jesus. Now, why Jesus has to clean the temple twice? If you go back to the scriptures in the Old Testament, what was the purpose of God asked uh, Moses to build the tabernacle and then it, would replace by, it was replaced by the temple that Solomon, was, uh, Solomon built? The only purpose that the tabernacle was built you will find in Exodus 25 verse 8 it says and they are to make a sanctuary for me so that I may dwell among them. God wanted to stay with you and me and his people. Though he is uh, he's residing in heaven among the glory among the worship of the angels and cherubims and, and, and majesty he loves his people, you and me, so much that he wanted to live with us. And that's why he said that to Moses, they built a sanctuary, a tabernacle, so I can live where my people are on this earth. And then in Exodus chapter 30, you will find that Moses set up a, 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 a tax system that everybody should bring half a shekel, regardless whether he's a rich or poor, they should bring the half a shekel to the sanctuary. Now, it is not that God wants our money, because whatever we have is already given to us by God. It's just like a, uh, when you have a little kids and if they are eating a cookie or candy, you will sometimes say, give it to me. And when they come and offer you, you will not take it. But you will, you will be so happy to realize that how much my child loves. So God doesn't want our money because whatever we have is His. But for the, for the arrangement, for the, for the planning, for the system, Moses set up this uh, in Exodus 30 that every, everybody should bring a half a shekel to the, to the sanctuary, to the uh, temple. Now in Jesus' time, they were living under the Romans. So the shekel is not the currency of the Roman government. It's a Roman, Roman currency. So to come to the temple, to come to the presence of God, everybody has to buy a shekel, just like a currency exchange, or uh, uh, where they have to convert their currency to buy a shekel, and with that shekel, half shekel, they can go to the temple. 
and it became a business. And that was not God's intention. God wanted to live with his people. So if you look into Matthew, it's a very beautifully written Matthew uh, chapter 12. It talks about then Jesus went into uh, Matthew, sorry, Matthew 21 verse 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who brought and sold in temple and overturned the tables of the money exchangers and the, and the seats of those who sold do, uh, those. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. You have made it a den of thieves. Then, verse 40, then the blind and the lamb came to him in the temple and he healed them. Now here you see, there is no more their money exchangers or the uh, people can convert or buy the shekel to come to the temple. Because Jesus has destroyed that system here and then he bring the people in. It shows God's heart that he is not into taking things from people. He wanted to be with the people. He wanted to help them. So now the lamb and the blind and everybody who were sick came in without that half a shekel. Because God is a God of God. Jesus came to fulfill the laws. He knows that we cannot keep the law. That's why he came and he said that I did not come to destroy the law but to fulfill the law. But now, on his, because His grace and because He loves us, He is inviting these people to come to me, come to the temple, come to me, and He healed them everybody. Now, this is towards the end of, of His ministry. But why in, in John chapter 2 we find in the beginning of him, His ministry? And why there are two, uh, uh, two cleansings? There is a little difference. You can see that uh, in the John, you will find he used the whip. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there's a second cleansing. He did not use the whip. In the Matthew, Mark, and John, uh, sorry, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he, he called, this is my house. My house. But in the beginning of his ministry, in, in John chapter 2, he refers to the temple as my father's house. And then in John chapter 2, uh, people Im immediately confronted him. Who are you? Ha ha give us a sign. So there is a, there are two cleansing uh, happen. But then why Jesus has to clean the temple in the beginning and towards the end of his ministry? And this is a eye opening for me because the way Jesus cleaned in the beginning, he told people that this is my heart, my father's heart, that people can come to me. Not on what they do, but based on what Jesus is doing. Let them come to me. And then after Jesus must have gone from the temple, they came back and they re-established their money exchange system again. And that's why towards the end of the ministry, Jesus has to do it again, the cleansing. And when I was reading this and when I was pondering on this process, I realized that how many times God has to remind me second time. One time I agree with him, one time I understood what God's heart is, but then because of my lifestyle, because whatever I do, because whatever I go through, I forget. And I think that we need to remember that no matter what happens, our focus should be that what, what my father's heart is. And Jesus loves the people that we, we marginalize. We consider them of no value. We think that we deserve more, not them. But Jesus loves them. Maybe we should be careful that we don't become a roadblock for somebody to come to know our Father, Jesus, and find an eternal life. I hope this has encouraged you. May God bless you. Thank you.